Jutsu. <laughs> Welcome to the Whiskey Bowl. This is a day for Bloody Butcher Bourbon, a gift from M Mitch Weddle. Thanks, Thanks Mitch. Mitch. Thanks, Mitch. You got me the whiskey I deserved. Thanks, Mitch. Thanks, Mitch. You got me the whiskey I deserved. Thanks, Mitch. Thanks, Mitch. You got me the whiskey I deserved. Thanks, Mitch. You got me the whiskey I deserved, and you helped my entire family. So this is a Kentucky distillery. Yeah. An actual Kentucky distillery. I'm loving the nose. Whose family has a farm. Yeah. And like, like three, four, five mm -hmm. generation farmers. Yeah. They grow and harvest their own grains right. that they end up putting in whiskeys. Okay, yeah. Fresh. Yes. Fresh and clean and not bright, thin, brittle, but like, Bright as in you're walking through a field on a cool day and you get uh It reminds me of the walk we took when we were in Con Connecticut. We were, we skipped and held hands and frolicking and frolicked the and there were birds singing. <laughs> it was like a Disney movie, really. This is a much worse story yeah. than the real story. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Real two, stories. Two Wait, introverts that. highly isolate themselves <laughs> because they can't handle social interaction. <laughs> okay. Okay. No. This is 70% uh, Bloody Butcher Corn. 70%. Oh. Do you realize that when wow. we try Bloody Butcher Corn from most places, it's an accent grain? Yes. Because it's, it's, it's so expensive. Very expensive. 50% malted rye, 10% right. malted wheat, 5% yeah. malted barley. Right. This is a four grain mash bill. Yeah, yeah. Right? But 70% Bloody Butcher Corn. Okay. That's exciting because one of the things that you and I were playing with over in the distillery has a lot wow. of bloody butcher in there. It's so green, this thing. Well, hold on. But like fresh green. Yes. Not, Not sappy, nasty, gummy green. Correct. No. Fresh green. And then, um, honestly, the, that there's it's almost turning into like a, a eucalyptus, like a sweet eucalyptus on that nose, which I would often attribute to certain ryes. But mostly- Low rye, yeah, 15% rye. Yeah. Wow. And so, agricultural freshness. That's yeah. the term. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. Whoa, it tastes exactly wow. like it smells. It does. Exactly. Wow. It's like you took this little nose that you thought was just this one little interesting thing, yeah. and then you just opened it up and unrolled it. Jep, Jep the Creed. Jep the Creed. Your, your the taste creed. exploration of this whiskey does this little ramp yep. that's like smooth, a little bit of a green hill, yep. back to sweet, herbal finish, and it's exactly the unfurling wow. of the nose. Hold on. The herbal I've finish? never experienced that before. Hold on, herbal finish though? Because mm -hmm. herbal is something we throw around a lot mm. with rice. It's not a rye herbal, mm -mm. not a rice spice. That's not there. But I get what you're saying. It, agricultural. Wow, it even tastes a little bit like chewing on a grass stalk. Mm -hmm. You ever like pull it out of the ground and then chew on the, like Tom Sawyer. You're a heifer. Which one of us in this more scenario like would be more likely to have five stomachs? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just asking. <laughs> For a friend. So before my wife and I were married, <laughs> No, there's just certain key moments where you realize, I think I like this person. And uh, we were in her car, we were going on a date somewhere, and one of her friends called in, and they're telling stories, and then she laughed and said, you heifer! <laughs> <laughs> so and then she was like busting her balls, literally like, okay, this is my person. Because she calls her friend a heifer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So this is a more recent release of the Jep the Creed. I think we have... An older release of Jep the Creed. Now there's, uh, or we try to find a different bloody butcher. Oh, this is so unique. This is so unique. It really is. This is unique and special exploration whiskey for days. There's like I think some type of baking spice high up in the in the nose and in the palate. And I, I want to say it's almost a nutmeg, but not really a nutmeg. This this is a whiskey that can absolutely turn you off. It's so strong and dramatic in its direction yeah. that if you don't like these notes, you are over it. Instantly. I think it is a lover to hate it whiskey. Yeah, this is no, there's no subtlety in the mid, there's no like, oh, I can, or you can't decide. No. There's just. You know what's super interesting about this whiskey? Hmm. Super interesting. And it's one of my favorite smells in the world. And a lot of people may not enjoy that. They may not even get this. But about three quarters of the way through, before it lands on the finish, there is this taste of the way Toys R Us used to smell. Yes. So when this, you walked in, you're like, the plastic toy smell? Yeah, it's the best smell in the world. Right? Immediately, good feelings. 
new toy air smell shows up in the palette. Yeah, not packaging. Right. New toy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Added a little water. Ooh, it jumped out with sugar. And it jumped out with a little bit more of that oaky character. I'm, yeah, my mouth dried out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It changed. It changed. I don't know if it changed for the better. I think it lost some of the nice little dance of sweet things that were going on earlier. Yeah, it, it simplified it. Yeah. I'm looking for... As he looks, Robert Decker. Is it normal for someone after drinking a lot of higher proof whiskey than drinking something around 85 to 86 proof to not to taste the alcohol at all? Uh, yeah, you acclimate. That's you're yeah. just getting used to the high alcohol. Yeah. And it's interesting because even at those lower proofs in the 80s, whenever people are coming from wine or beer, the lower proofs will put them on their heels. They're like, oh, it's just nothing but alcohol. How can you yeah, drink the 40s, this yeah. acclimation and getting you know that, that frame of reference and then being able to see past that, taste past that into the flavors, that's everything, yeah. I've been drinking stuff around 100 to 110, not even, yeah. not even in the 60s, in the no, 50s. No, but still. Yeah, still relatively high. Today I opened up a bottle of Old Forester 86 and a friend yeah. got me several months ago and it was sweet caramel and buttered popcorn. Yes. No alcohol taste at all. Yeah. Then I had a dram of Elijah Craig barrel proof and all I could get was burn, which I expected, but I wasn't expecting overpowering burn. Yeah, yeah. this is why we often say uh, taste is so subjective and it depends on things like the time of day and the meal you had and what you just drank previously. Yeah, the arrangement of, it, this is a really hard thing when you're doing comparisons. Right. Like when you're doing a trio comparison, the order at which you try them first right. is, is everything. Right, right. And, and, and it's another reason why we often say don't take our opinions as sacrosanct. And I don't think anybody watching this would, <laughs> yeah. but because... I think it's pretty unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, it, one, it's very subjective. People's mm -hmm. preferences and, and what they're experiencing is going to be different. It's just is. Yeah. It's the way the brain works and then the tongue and the taste receptors work. The best you can ever get from a reviewer is what a DJ does, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, you get to know what they like. And uh, you get to know over time which DJs you can trust because what they like, you like. And which DJs, every time they sh** on something, you're like, well, I'm probably going to like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I know there's a few people. We Same like, thing with movie reviewers. There's a few people that watch this like, anytime Daniel or Rex don't like something, I was like, okay, here we go. Here we go. That's, I'm going to like it. That's my yeah. little house. Did you find the thing? No. You are like not even batting. I know, it's bad. It's just like, it's, it's what, two out of the last five no, 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 you, no. Just I, these two videos. Huh. The other ones, I found things. I think you don't understand how much embarrassment, how much embarrassment I've saved you. <laughs> because you have wandered around like 30, 40 minutes. Just bumping, <laughs> 30, trying to 40. find stuff. <laughs> and just, just burning footage, burning like batteries, all this stuff. And I cut it out. Because I don't want you to be embarrassed. Uh, <laughs> so that's the storyline we're going with. <laughs> we got 13 hen. Something similar to the turkey. I'm in need of a little help from you magnificent bastards out there. I'm picking up a gift for a host I've yet to meet. Mm. I've been told he only drinks the turkey. Mm. But I would love to bring a different bottle. I feel like the gift would be made a little lackluster if he has plenty of the brand he, on hand already. Right. My guess is that he drinks Wild Turkey 101. I couldn't find a mash bill listed online to help guide me to something maybe relatively close. Any suggestions or thoughts would be appreciated. In the Anyone? comments below. In the comments. Right. If you like Wild Turkey 101, right. what else could you drink? What was the other Wild Turkey that came up? Rare in, Breed. Was it Rare Breed? So good. Okay, Wild Turkey Rare Breed. Yeah, so you can always get them rare breed. Here's the thing. Whenever somebody has very consistently established their preference to uh, a, a certain brand or right. even a certain category, it's not necessarily a flavor thing. Right. It can very often be an identity thing. And an emotional connection. Right. So to try and give them something outside of that, it's like, oh, you can. But if you want to give them something for their benefit that you know they're going to enjoy and appreciate... Give him the wild turkey. Yeah, give him, but get him a special wild turkey. The rare breed, I think, was lovely. Yes, it, that was my favorite one so far. Yeah, 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 yeah. It just stands up to things. Yeah, and uh, I think if we, yeah, in the description, I'm curious to see what you magnificent bastards think would be a good alternative to the wild turkey. When I think wild turkey, I think rich, classic bourbon flavors, very nicely balanced. Balanced mm. is the main thing I get consistently out of wild turkeys. Here's fighting, stealing, drinking. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal your liver's heart. And if you drink, 
May you drink with us.